What's up, my awesome YouTubers? Ryan1988 or Justin back here to do a video for you all. I hope you're all doing well out there, and welcome back to season two of Retrospective and Memories and my first video for 2023. So, first of all, Happy New Year to you all. I hope you guys had a safe and awesome new year. And here's to a brand new year. So, I'm sending you guys love, positive vibes, and um, I hope you guys have an awesome year. And uh, I'm still going strong, guys. So 14 years on YouTube. Let's get to 15. And again, like I said in my last video, I want to try to get to 20 years. So we'll see what happens. We'll see where YouTube is YouTube is um, in 20 or not 20 years. But when I hit 20 years, hopefully it's still around. Um, hopefully I'm still around making videos. But uh, yeah, I want to try to get to 20 years. So we'll see what happens, guys. But Yes, yeah, so I just hit 14 years on YouTube, and once again, thank you for the love and support. It really means a lot to me, guys, and I appreciate you all. So, um, 2023, I'm going to make it a goal to make as make more videos, be more active on YouTube, uh, you know, kind of take part a lot more in the YouTube community, because I've always loved this community. I love the movie community. I love the horror movie community. And I love talking movies with you all, so I want to continue on, and again, I want this to be a better year for the channel, and hopefully you guys enjoy everything that I have coming out, uh, you know, including the retrospective and memories, which this is season two, uh, where again, I'll be covering, like with season one, um, and I'm calling it season two because there was a big gap between uh, videos in this series. But like with season one, I'll be covering my favorite movies, uh, you know, paying respect and talking about my memories uh, on a movie in each episode. And uh, unlike season one, season two will have both recorded videos and live streams. And with the live streams, I want to reach out to friends of mine here on YouTube and, uh, you know, talk about our favorite movies, you know, focus on a movie, give our memories of it, why we love it. And so I hope you guys enjoy everything that's to come with Season 2. Uh, but let's kick off Season 2, Episode 1, with one of my favorite vampire films from the 80s and one of my favorite horror movie sequels. I absolutely love this. And the original film is in my top three favorite films of all time. But I love this sequel, and I think it's equally as great. I think it's a lot of fun. I absolutely enjoy and love this movie every time I watch it, and it never gets old for me. And that is Fright Night Part 2, uh, which came out in 1988, so the year I was born. So 34 years old this movie is, just like me. But uh, Fright Night Part 2, uh, a sequel to the 1985 Tom Holland Fright Night, which uh, we'll talk about that briefly in a minute, but um, that is my favorite uh, vampire movie of all time, but that is my one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, like I said, top three favorite movies of all time. But Fright Night Part 2, again, I equally love this movie. Um, you know, some would probably say, and I can see in some ways where the characters aren't as strong compared to the first movie, but I still love it, and I still think you have some great and unique characters in this movie. Some great vampires, some awesome practical effects, and for me, one of the most underrated and underappreciated um, sequels out there. Sequels in general out there. Not just a horror movie sequel, not just a movie, but a sequel in general. Um, came out in 1988 and had a short-lived theatrical release. I think two weeks it was in theaters and then it was pulled because the president of the company that was releasing this movie uh, was killed. And he was the father of the Mendez brothers. So when the Mendez brothers murdered their parents, um, again, I believe the, the father was the president or he was involved somehow in this company they pulled Fright Night Part 2 because of that. And again, only had a, you know, two-week, very short-lived theatrical run. And if I remember, co remember correct, within the two weeks, I think it was a pretty successful run. Um, again, short-lived, but it made its money. It was making money. Um, it just so happened that a terrible 
you know, crime happened and a terrible, terrible murders happened that the movie was affected by it and uh, was pulled from theaters. And so with that, Fright Night Part 2 um, really only had, you know, a following through VHS tapes, uh, rental VHS tapes, and really had a popularity on TV. And the first time I saw this movie uh, was on VHS. I remember renting this movie quite a bit at the video store. You know, my mom, you know, she's a big horror movie fan. And so I grew up with the movies. I would watch horror movies with her all the time. I still do when I visit her. And I, I just remember going in the video store, going down the horror movie aisle, and I would come across Fright Night Part 2. And throughout the years, I would rent the movie. And then after, you know, renting it on VHS, I would see it on TV all the time. I remember sci-fi would play this movie constantly. This one and Night of the Comet, or I'm sorry, not Night of the Comet, but Night of the Creeps were two of the biggest movies that I remember seeing on sci-fi constantly. Um, seeing the Howling sequels that have yet to get proper releases, like 3, 4, and 5. remember seeing those on sci-fi. The Ghoulies movies, you know, those are all movies that I remember back in the day, either on AMC or sci-fi. And Fright Night Part 2 was one of them. And this movie has always stayed with me. It's always been a film I've loved. I loved it when I first saw it on VHS. And I still love it now. And it just it's just so sad that this movie does not have the proper release that it deserves. Because, you know, in the U.S. alone, just in the U.S., we have an out-of-print VHS tape. And then we have this out-of-print DVD. And I still have it. I did not have this or I did not buy this when this was in print. I think this was very short lived. I think it only had a very limited, um, you know, uh, print or, and it went out of print very quick, I think. Um, but yeah, I got it for a pretty crazy price. I wouldn't say too crazy. It was a gift, um, but I'm sure it's going for more money now. Um, however, yeah. I, I remember getting this, uh, I think it was a Christmas present, and being really excited because, again, this is just one of those movies that I grew up with, and I love still today. You know, some of my favorite things about this movie, the biggest thing for me, uh, I love the cast, and, you know, while I don't think the cast is as strong as the cast in the first movie, I think overall you have such an amazing cast here and unique characters that I love, you know. Of course, you have William Ragsdale coming back as Charlie Brewster. He's great as always. You have Roddy McDowell as Peter Vincent. I love him in this. Uh, I loved him, or I love him, in the original movie. But in some ways, I love him even more in this movie. Um, his character is just so great in both films. So rest in peace, Roddy McDowell. But outside those characters, you have a lot of brand new characters, including the amazing and beautiful... Julie Carmen, who plays Regina Dandridge, and Regina Dandridge is the sister of Jerry Dandridge, who is getting revenge for her brother's death, and she's going after Charlie, and she's going after um, Peter Vincent, and everybody that they're, you know, they have a relationship with, including Charlie Brewster's new girlfriend, a or not Amy, but um, Tracy Lynn's character, Alex. Okay, I had to think about that for a second. Um, but yeah, going back to Regina Dandridge, Julie Carmen, she is amazing in this. And I, I love the character because she's just, she's this gentle voice, you know, seems to be a kind person, but she has a lot of rage in her and, you know, it's, it's almost bottled up and, you know, her main goal is to get revenge for her brother's death, but she is fantastic in this. I love Julie Carmen. I wish she was involved with more movies. Um, I've only seen a few things with her. This one and John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness are the two big ones that I've seen. But I absolutely love her in this. I, again, I think she's, like with Jerry Dandridge, just equally as good as Jerry Dandridge. And they're believable as brother and sister. You know, if they were in one movie together, it would be fantastic. But um, yeah, she's amazing in this, and I, I love that character. You have some other great side characters in this. You have some great villains here. You have the character who is a vampire werewolf, and 
he brings a lot of the comedy to it and it works really well in this movie you know i'm very picky when it comes to you know comedy and horror movies but when it works well it works well and it works well in this movie in my opinion um you have a character in this film and you've seen him in a lot of films and television shows throughout the 80s 90s and 2000s um who eats bugs and you know you don't know who he is you don't know what kind of character he is but um yeah he's he's known for eating the bugs um in the movie um and then you have a vampire and when i was a kid there was a moment that really terrified me um and it's a vampire that rides around on roller skates and there's a scene in this movie where a college student is leaving class it's at night it's very quiet in these hallways and you you just start hearing roller skating or roller skates down a hallway and you don't know what it is at first and then out of the fog comes this vampire with fangs out and kills this college student but i just remember that scene as a kid scaring me and still today when i watch it while it's not as scary i still get goosebumps a little bit knowing what's going to happen in just a moment with this character and it, it's very creepy and effective um this one is a lot more fun it's more it's more entertaining um not saying that the original one's not entertaining i think the original one original one works better with characters and story structure where even though i love the characters in this movie and i love the story i think the strongest thing about this movie is the entertainment factor I think it's a great sequel. I think it's one of those movies that if you've never seen it, if you could try to get your hands on a physical format of this movie or see it on TV or see it if it's on some type of streaming service to definitely check it out. Um, yeah, Fright Night Part 2. The practical effects are equally as good as the original practical effects. Um, I love the direction here by Tommy Lee Wallace, who directed Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Um, the It miniseries from 1990, and so many other things, you know, involved with John Carpenter's Halloween. Um, he's been involved with a lot of films, either directing the movies, being involved in the films, producing them, writing them. Um, he's been around for a long time, and I got to meet him, and I talked to him about Fright Night Part 2, and it was wonderful because, again, this movie, going back to what I was talking about in the beginning is a film that I just have so much love for and I've always loved this movie and for me it's it's up there with the original it's such a great sequel and while the original one is my favorite this was my go-to one all the time growing up I think I've seen this movie more than the original one to be honest because I watched this one more I watched this film more than the original um, so yeah, Fright Night Part 2, going over kind of my physical media real quick, which is not much. Um, I'd love to get a VHS copy of this, but, uh, this is the Artisan DVD that is, again, long out of print. It was not in print for a while. I think it was very short-lived, kind of like its theatrical run, but, um, still in great shape. Uh, comes with the, uh, DVD insert, um, which again, this was an Artisan DVD, and you'll see some titles there like Basic Instinct and the Metal Tin version of Terminator 2 that they released. So this came out, I think, in 2022. Yeah, 2003. So exactly, you know, almost 20 years ago. Yeah, so this year would be 20 years since this came out. But it came out in 2003. And again, it was very short-lived. And I don't think it was in print for a long time. Um... This movie deserves so much more love. I know it has a fan following out there, and I know many people are voicing their voices or talking about this movie getting a physical media release. We want it. And hopefully, you know, Vestron Video or some company releases this movie on Blu-ray, maybe even 4K, but I'd be happy with a awesome Vestron release. I feel like any of the companies out there that would release this, I think... Vestron would release it. I don't know why, but I have a feeling that would be the company that would release it. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that either Vestron Video or some company out there um, releases this movie and we get Fright Night Part 2. 
So I have this bare bones DVD. I still love it though. It's nostalgic for me. Um, but I also have a uh, made on demand Blu-ray. So a bootleg Blu-ray, MOD Blu-ray, whatever you want to call it. It looks and sounds amazing. It's the best the movie's ever looked. I don't know where they got the transfer. Uh, it looks gorgeous though. So, um, but yeah, this is the made on demand Blu-ray I've had for a long time. I love that it comes with disc art and it also comes with a menu. Uh, it has bonus features on it, so some rare, you know, behind the, behind the scenes footage. Uh, it comes with two versions of the film, so you can watch the HD version, or if, you know, you don't have this DVD, but you can come across this uh, Blu-ray on eBay where I found it. Um, you have the um, Artisan DVD transfer on here, so you have two options there. Really cool. Again, kind of, it, it is fun to have, and I'll always keep it, even if Artisan or not Arson, but Best Strong Video or some company out there releases this movie on Blu-ray. I'll always keep this one. So very cool there. And, you know, the last thing I want to talk about um, when it comes to Fright Night Part 2 is the You're So Cool Brewster documentary. So this is a must for um, Fright Night fans, both the original and Fright Night Part 2. You know, it's three and a half hours long. It's so worth adding in your collection, picking up if you can get your hands on it now, um, because you get a really good detailed documentary talking about the first movie, but talking about Fright Night Part 2. And it's really cool. I, I absolutely love it. I love horror movie documentaries. I think they're a lot of fun to watch. You get, you know, really cool behind the scenes details on your favorite movies when they do when they do these documentaries. And uh, Fright Night Part 2, you know, I'm so happy we have this because, you know, now we know more about the film. We know more about the behind the scenes making of. We know more about its release. Um, and it's just really awesome and refreshing, not only to have bonus features for the first movie, but also Fright Night Part 2, which again is one of those movies that now has this underrated or not underrated but this fan following from an underrated movie um and now we have you know a documentary to talk about the movie or we have a documentary talking about the movie i kind of rambled there um but it's just amazing to have this uh, because now we can hear you know the cast and crew's thoughts on not only the first movie but of course fright night part two which is all about this video um, and the last thing I want to talk about is kind of just the history of Fright Night. So, you know, of course we have the original Fright Night, 1985's Fright Night. Tom Holland directed it. This is top three favorite movies for me of all time. Uh, and then, of course, we have the remake and then its sort of sequel, which they're not connected. But, you know, this Fright Night Part 2, which is not, you know, the original or not the 1988 Fright Night Part 2, this one gets a little bit more talk than that movie, which is sad because Fright Night Part 2 from 1988 is amazing. But you have the remake and then you have this too. So, you know, they have Blu-ray releases. I know, you know, Blu-ray was around when those movies came out. Blu-ray's still around. Um, but again, Fright Night Part 2. I, I want to see this movie get a lot more, you know, love when it comes to physical media. And I would hope that if a company can, um, that they could release that at some point. Because that movie deserves a love. More people need to see that movie. More people definitely need to talk about it and watch it. And hopefully have the same love and passion that I do with the movie. And so many other people do that grew up with the film um, through, you know, VHS rentals, out of print DVD, or TV. Which is where a lot of people saw it. So... Um, but that is going to be episode one, and I know it's 20 minutes long talking about one movie, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had so much fun uh, talking about my love for Fright Night Part 2, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you guys have never seen Fright Night Part 2, I think it's on YouTube. Watch it on YouTube. Check this movie out. It deserves a watch, people. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy season two. I hope you guys like this new background. I, I kind of reorganized my whole movie collection and now this whole entire wall is nothing but horror movies and a lot of my favorite ones guys i've seen pretty much all of these i think there's my there might be maybe 10 
on this wall that I've not seen. Maybe a little bit more, but, um, you know, I'll be talking about a lot of my favorite movies from these shelves, guys. So I hope you guys enjoy, um, again, season two. Enjoy everything that I have to come um, in 2023. I have a lot of videos in mind, and again, I'm going to be more active this year, 2022. Um, I think I said 2022 when I meant to say 2023. I have a lot more videos to come in 2023. But in 2022, I wasn't as active towards the end of the year. I had some stuff going on, and I just got busy with life. So uh, I'm, I'm my goal is to make 2023 the year of more content and more videos for you guys. So once again, thank you for watching, and thank you for your love, guys. It really means a lot to me. So as always, you guys are awesome. You guys rock. And with the positive, out with the negative. Remember to be who you are because you are amazing and you are beautiful. I love you all. And I'll